So in this video, we're going to be setting up our player class, but we're actually going to be uh, going ab about it a little bit indirectly. Uh, we're going to create a class called Entity, and it's going to be representative of every single game object. Every single object, player, enemy, is going to inherit from our Entity class. And the Entity class is going to have a generic sprite, uh, generic text, and a generic rect, which is like a bounding, bounding box. Uh, sounds like I'm going through puberty. Uh, a bounding box. And so we're just actually going to be using um, a reference from a different game I made a few days ago. It's a puzzle drop game. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Xcode SFML project and we're going to create a new file and it's under OSX source C++ file. You want to have uh, create a header uh, checked and we're going to call this entity. So under um, entity.h, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'll go this step by step, but I don't want to screw up. So we're including all these libraries and I'm going to include the source code in the video. So you can just uh, copy these if you want. They're not all needed, but it's just sort of what I do. Uh, so here's what happens. We create a class by typing class. We name the class entity. We have our curly bracket with the semicolon at the end. And this is under public. So there's three options. There's our public, private, and protected. And in this video series, we're probably only gonna be using public. And so we're gonna get rid of all this stuff here. And we just are going to have a generic SF rectangle shape, which is just a little box that we use for collisions and an SF sprite, which is for our images of our sprite and an SF text just in case we need it because this is our generic entity that everything is going to inherit from. So we're going to go to create a new file and we're going to create our player class now. So player, I know if I'm lagging a bit, that's why that's not going. There we go. So player.h, what we're gonna do is we're going to create our inherited class. So what you need to do is you need to include entity.h in order for you to inherit from that file. So what we write is class and then the name of the class, which in this case is player, and then colon public, and we're going to inherit from entity. So I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff from the last one. And everything inside here is, um, is our variables that we can have unique to player. So we could write um, int movement speed because we don't want our entity to have a movement speed, but now our player has one. We could write int attack damage equals, let's say, five. And this is our constructor right here. Uh, we just name it player and then our two brackets and a colon. And so under our player.cpp, we can actually use the constructor when we create, it's automatically called when we create our object. So how we do that is we write player colon colon player, and then we can initialize anything that we want inside here. So for instance, we have a rect that's being inherited from our entity right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set a generic size for the rect to be um, using set size to be 50 by 50, 50 in width, 50 in height. 
and we're going to set the fill color to equal, let's say, blue. So our player is going to be 50 by 50 and is going to be a blue rectangle. And that's called whenever it's created. So let's actually create our player object from that class. So you need to make sure you do this or you're not going to be able to make the uh, object. You need to include player.h. And that's going to include the header file. We'll also um, include the entity just for kicks, just in case we need it. And then um, I disabled this music uh, commenting it out if you don't want to hear that. Uh, and before our game loop, we're going to actually create the object from the class. So we type class player, and then we get to name it whatever we want. So let's just call it player one. And let's say we want to set the sprite that's being inherited from entity. And how about we um, set it um, to be that um, texture that we used in a previous video of the guy walking. So let's go player dot player one. So we're accessing that object we created. We're going to go dot and then we're going to go sprite dot set texture. And we're going to set the texture equal to texture player, which we defined in a previous video. And so now we've created our player, but we're not actually drawing it to the screen. I'm just going to comment comment out this code for now. So if we want to draw it, we go window dot draw and then we go player one and then we type sprite because we're accessing the player object and then the sprite. Draw player. So now it, it should actually be uh, showing the sprite. We may need to set its position. Its position started automatically at zero zero right here. So how about we change the position to be initialized from our player.cpp constructor. So what we do is we go rect dot set position and you're going to be doing this a lot the set position and set size and stuff of things. So let's make it at 400 by 200. And so now it should load in Actually, we're setting the rect position, so that actually didn't change anything. So let's actually set up an initialization for the sprite. So we can go sprite.setPosition and we can go 400 by 200. And it'll be right there. But how about we create a method inside our um, player class that is uh, just update and what we're going to be doing is uh, we're just going to update the position uh, of our rect uh, of our sprite to be where our rect is because we're going to be using our rect for collision detection so we're just going to go void player and we're going to name the function is named update and so here's how we do this. We go um, sprite.setPosition and then we're going to go rect.getPosition. So now it's going to update it and keep them always together. So we're not going to be controlling our sprite directly. We're actually going to be going through our rect and then it's automatically going to be setting the sprite at the same position. So we know that our little image from the previous video um, for each sprite is 32 by 32. So let's set the bounding box also equal to that. Um, the sprite position initialization doesn't really matter because it's going to be updated with this one. So that's all good. But we need to actually call update every single frame in order to uh, have that happen and use the method. So we're just going to go update, update player. And we're going to go player one dot update to call the method. Method is just another name for a function in a class. And so that should work. But let's also create a um, another function or method which 
allows us to move the player like we did in the previous video, but not directly from our game loop like right here, but we'll make it a part to have our code easier. So we'll call it, um, how about update move uh, movement. I'm just gonna write update movement in the header file. Ah, uh, yes. Need to have void. Should be working now. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to um, copy this code from the previous video and we're going to paste it and so we have sprite player dot move but instead of sprite player we're going to use our rect because our rect is going to be what we're controlling everything with and we're also going to need to change the player movement speed to just movement speed because that's what we named it in our player.h. And I, instead of racked here, I should be using Sprite. And the counter walking from our previous one, uh, we're just gonna take that. And we'll paste it down below. And now we need to have counter walking defined in our header variable. So we're going to go int counter walking equals zero. So now we don't have any errors there. And we want to actually call that method. So we go player one dot update movement. And so if I didn't mess up too much, it should have the same functionality that we had from the previous sprite movement video. Except we need to actually move it apparently. But it does have the animation counter, so let's find out why that isn't working. So we have rec.move. Sprite position, rect dot get position, rect dot move. Should be moving the rect. Let's try drawing the rect separately. So we'll go window dot draw player one dot rect, and then we can see if it's actually moving. It's not moving. Player one. Sprite that's a position. Try this for a second. Oh, no, our movement speed is zero. Dear God, that was very sad. 
you're going to be going through this kind of thing all the time on your own trying to figure out what's going on so it's okay to see someone else screw up every now and then so we're just going to comment out the window.drop player1.rect and our sprite should be moving now Yeehaw. So we have the same functionality that we had before, 